Good morning. It's Monday, November 25th. I'm Elizabeth Hasselbeck. Democrats and Republicans finally finding something they can agree on this morning. The nuclear deal with Iran stinks. Iran is still going to be allowed to enrich while they're talking. We've let them out of the trap. They are one of the top supporters of terrorism around the world. So does the deal send the wrong message? Will we report? You decide. What are they cooking up? Nothing good. And is the Iran deal just a way to distract all of us from the bigger story? We're talking about Obamacare and a fresh round of problems on this Monday morning. All right, here we go again. The music world gets political. I want to acknowledge Trayvon Martin and the hundreds and hundreds of kids each year that are dying due to racial profiling. All right, uh, that's fascinating. And that's not all. Katy Perry is spark, uh, sparking some outrage for an offensive outfit, which I believe is Japanese themed, according to people in the studio. Fox and Friends starts now. It's time for Fox and Friends. <laughs> And live from Studio E in the heart of Midtown Manhattan, where I look outside, and it currently is 23 degrees. Ooh. Wow! Uh, right. Chilly. Look outside. Who'd you look for, Maria, or would you look at the sign? I looked at the sign oh, across okay. the street at the bank. It's 601. Those are always the most accurate. Degrees. Chilly. The bank sign. Close enough. <laughs> hey, yeah, we, uh, we actually were outside yesterday uh, at yeah. soccer, playing for two hours. Yeah. Uh, they get old enough, it's not considered uh, bad parenting anymore. They pretty much make their own decisions. Well, especially if you're out there with them. Right, I can still hear the wind in my head. It's like putting a shell to your ear after it's been slammed by the ocean. Uh, the wind hasn't stopped, but, but the controversy also hasn't stopped swirling around about this deal that we seem to have cut, five plus one, six major nations, and Iran, about their nuclear program. They get to keep it, mm -hmm. but they stop it. When it comes to their uh, heavy kind, water reactor plant, kind of the AROC plant, they say, well, they're not going to do anything for six months. Good news is it's not even online for a year. We'll go through it now. Sure. So because I'm not an expert on Iran, uh, we actually break this down pretty simply here for what they will have to do. Um, they have a commitment to halt their enrichment above 5% and significantly increase inspections to maintain stockpile of the nuclear fuel at the current level of six tons. So that's what, that's what they have to do um, right now. And what they'll get in return um, is relief from the economic sanctions, apparently $6 billion, um, in foreign exchange. And well, they'll, that will be immediately, um, they'll be receiving that immediately, $4.2 in oil revenues that it had not been able to access that's right. um, previously. This is such a good deal for them. It is such a bad deal for us, many people on Capitol Hill feel. In fact, Chuck Schumer, uh, the leading uh, Republic, or Democrat, that is to say, from uh, New York here in the U.S. Senate, uh, he said he wouldn't be surprised if in December Republicans and Democrats on Capitol Hill get together to come up with more sanctions, which means a gigantic embarrassment for the White House. But the only reason There's there are sanctions, Steve, is because of Congress. Congress is the one who, who ratcheted this whole thing up on Iran. They have pushed this thing forward. Brian, right, they have, but they're not agreeing right now. I mean, b well, they are agreeing right now on the fact that this was not enough, right? And before <laughs> Before we heard those comments, um, apparently the president got on the phone with the prime minister of Israel, um, Benjamin Netanyahu, who, quote, said, uh, what was reached last night in Geneva is not a historic agreement. Good it's evening. a historic mistake. Well, see, here's the thing. The United, the United Nations has resolutions that say no sanctions relief against will be lifted from Iran unless all uranium enrichment is suspended. It is not. They can continue to right. uh, brew that stuff and those spinners and stuff like that. The backlash on Capitol Hill was fierce and fast. Here are both sides. Let me first say that it's disappointing to me that Iran is still going to be allowed to enrich while they're talking. I would have thought that that should be a prerequisite to any kind of talks. We're not asking them to dismantle any of their centrifuges. So that's disappointing. We've got all the leverage in the negotiation and we've let them out of the trap. We are very concerned as to whether Iran will live up 
to even these commitments. Remember who we're dealing with. We're dealing with Iran. They are one of the top supporters of terrorism around the world. This is providing them resources and money. And we should not take this lightly. We have to have a full dismantling if we want the world to be safer. The AP does report that for the past year, secretly, we've been meeting one-on-one -on -one with Iran in Oman yeah. for a year on these secret talks, and we get this limited deal. Now, for the most part, you have outrage throughout the Middle East because you saw an explosion inside the Iranian uh, embassy in Lebanon because this deal, some would say, was about to be cut. In Saudi Arabia, they've gone silent, but word is they are saying to themselves and starting to move on their own nuclear program. United Arab Emirates is outraged. Israel is beside themselves, and to your point, Point, Elizabeth, what I find unbelievable and unconscionable is that President Obama called Benjamin Netanyahu after he made that statement, not before. My goodness, that's the first call you make because they are the most directly affected. And when the French is saying hold the line and they ultimately give in, then I think they they're can. somewhat disturbing. So you have six months to see where they do here, but six months for them to get $7 billion and six months for China and Russia to use this opportunity to start once again financing and supplying Iran's nuclear program. Sure, and you know, later on in the program, just before the top of the hour at 745, we'll be speaking with uh, Tony Blinken, the Deputy National Secretary Advisor. He used to work under uh, Joe Biden. It was actually in the photos that the White House released. They were selective in terms of the photos they did release, but you saw him sitting there with the President mm -hmm. um, while they were discussing what was going on with Iran. So, way to go, Iran. We're going to ask him some questions today. Way to go, Iran. You got a really good deal. Us, not so much. Meanwhile, the